Hey what's up guys, it's Bakes here and thank you for joining me for this collection update video. This time it's an update for Autumn 2024. Um, if you guys have been keeping up on my channel for a while now or seen these videos before, you guys will know how my collection updates normally work. Uh, first I'll go through all the horror movies that I've picked up over the past three months. Um, I've got a handful of collectibles off to the side here which I'll also go through and then somewhere towards the back of this video I'll go through the albums and music that I've also picked up over the past three months. Um, today's haul is actually a relatively smaller one especially comparing it to my last few collection updates which have actually been really big um, so maybe it's just smaller in comparison I don't know but um, there still is a fair bit to go through, obviously mostly horror movies because that's what my channel is. Um, but like I said, a handful of other things to go through also. Um, but like I said, if you've seen my collection update videos before, you guys would know they normally take a little while to go through, so we might as well get straight into it. Um, as usual, I'll try and also do it all in one take. Save myself from editing, but we'll see how we go. Um, like usual, I'll start with the horror movies because that's what I always do and that's what I always have most of. Normally after my horror movies that's when I go to collectibles and then I finish with music but I think I'll swap the music and collectibles today because I'm not gonna lie I feel like most of you will be very underwhelmed with my collectibles today um, because it is a lot of niche stuff, weird things, a lot of things that you guys will be thinking is that even worth showing off but I want to speak about it, I want to show them off. You guys can skip it or stay if you want it's up to you, I'll put time bars in the um, you know, little time by chapter things if you want to skip. But either way, starting off with the horror movies, kind of in an order today, we'll see. Uh, but the first movie here is called The Dead, um, a zombie film from 2010. Uh, if you watched my video where I reviewed the 22 shots of Moods and Horror Podcasts Hidden Gems, uh, this was one of them. It was suggested by JP. Um, yeah, man, just a really cool zombie movie. I watched it online uh, for that review that I did in my video, and I just liked it so much. I'm like, yeah, I need to get my hands on a copy of this one. Um, just very simple. Um, as soon as the movie starts, you kind of know the pace and the feel of what you're going to get here. Um, just classic walking zombies as well, which, you know, I just feel like we see less of, you know, with modern zombie films. But um, this one, I really dug it. I haven't given it a rewatch since. Um, getting my hands on this physical copy, but I'll definitely get around to it soon. So thank you JP for this recommendation. Like I said guys, that was um, with the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast Hidden Gems episode. Um, and this was another one from that. Uh, this movie is called Devil Doll. Uh, this was a suggestion by Moods. Um, and it's a film from the 60s, very much up my alley um, for movies like this from the 60s, where it's a bit more goofy and silly but then it's also got like this creepy undertone to it as well it's about this um i guess magician or whatever you want to call him and he has this uh dummy that he carries around and the dummy talks and walks around on stage and everything and this guy's trying to figure out what's going on um it flies by as well it's like a little over an hour um this one i actually watched on tubi for the first time again just liked it so much i had to get a copy um this is an edition put out by umbrella um, and it's actually called the Continental Version with additional adult scenes. Um, it looks like it's got like an extra couple of minutes maybe. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I think I remember on the 2B version I watched that did seem like there were a few cuts, but I don't know. Like I said, I haven't given it a rewatch since actually getting my hands on this copy, but excited to check it out again. Thank you for the recommendation, Moods. Um, while I'm on the topic of the 22 shots of moods and horror. Um, I always listen to every episode that they do of the podcast and they recently did a urban horror episode where they spoke about three urban horror movies, which um, urban horror is a very niche um, subgenre when it comes to horror. There aren't a lot of urban horror movies, but they spoke about three movies. Two of them I had never seen before and didn't own in my collection. Um, so we'll go through them now. The first one is a film called Death by Temptation. Um, it says starring Samuel L. Jackson, but he's in the movie for like three minutes. Um, very low budget. Um, you guys need to understand that if you're just going into this movie blind. Uh, but this was probably my favorite movie of the three that they reviewed. Um, like I said, I hadn't seen this movie before picking it up, but it was just really cool. It was about... Um, these friends who uh, meet up after a while, um, they're in the city, 
And it's basically the story of a succubus, like a female demon, um, however you want to describe a succubus. But I just thought this movie was a lot of fun. Yes, lower budget, there's a few moments where you actually see the boom mic, but um, I really en enjoyed this one, I dug it. Uh, the next one was, again from the same urban horror episode, uh, Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. Um, I actually thought I owned this movie, so when they reviewed it, I'm like, ah, oh, I vaguely feel like I've seen it before, I feel like I have it, I went and checked my shelf and I didn't. Um, but anyway, I had to get my hands on it because when they spoke about it, it sounded really cool. Um, there were a few stories in this one, it's an anthology, um, a few stories that I thought were okay, but I was a little bit underwhelmed by this one, I thought it was going to be at least a little bit more fun, um, I didn't really dig it too much, um, but yeah, happy to get my hands on this um, copy, add it to the collection. Um, the third movie, by the way, for the urban horror episode was Bones, but I already own that, starring Snoop Dogg again. Um, I didn't give that a rewatch, actually. I, I think I remember liking that movie. It's been a while, though. Um, here I have the Amityville Horror. Yes, I did not own the Amityville Horror. It was just a blind spot in my collection. Now, if you remember in my, I think it was my last collection update video, I again picked up the Amityville Horror. The reason why I had to pick it up again was because the copy that I picked up didn't work, so um, obviously I want a movie that I can actually watch, so um, it was just a blind spot in my collection, very well-known horror movie, I'm not going to get into it too much, but just never owned it, so I had to get my hands on it. Uh, this next one here um, is Paranormal Activity Next of Kin. Um, this is the one that originally came out on Paramount streaming service, whatever it's called, Paramount Plus, I think. Um, I thought it would just never come out on physical media, but here we have it. Um, I actually didn't mind this one. Um, the aspects that make it a paranormal activity film, I didn't really enjoy. They should have just made it its own found footage movie and not put the paranormal activity banner on it, but I guess, you know, they need to try and draw in a crowd, I guess, but I thought this one was kind of cool. Um, it's definitely not the best in the franchise, but um, I was surprised with how much I did um, enjoy this movie, or at least was entertained by it. Um, so yeah, Paranormal Activity Next of Kin. Um, the reason why I picked that one up in particular, not only did it just come to media, um, if you remember, I was actually going to rank the franchise, but then I remembered I had never actually seen Next of Kin, so I had to pick it up. Um, another one that I was surprised um, got released on physical media, at least here in Australia, was Hellraiser Remake, um, because this, again, was made for, I think it was Hulu or something, so I just thought, again, it was going to always be on streaming, but got a physical release. Um, I think I'm in the rare few that probably, you know, enjoyed this movie uh, more than most. Um, it's not as good as the first original Hellraiser or even some of the sequels, but I thought it wasn't too bad, so decided to pick it up. Obviously still wrapped. I haven't given it a rewatch yet, but let me know your thoughts on the Hellraiser remake. Um, another blind spot in my collection, um, Bride of Frankenstein. And isn't this weird? I actually don't own Frankenstein either. There are just some really popular must own horror movies that I do not own. Um, and I don't know why I got my hands on Bride of Frankenstein before Frankenstein, but like I said, just a blind spot in my collection, never owned a copy of it, so had to pick up Bride of Frankenstein. Um, everyone would know this movie. Pretty fucking cool. Alright. Next pile for the horror movies. Um, saw this one on the shelf. Just thought, why not? Because it's a movie from a few years back that I actually thought was pretty fucking fun. Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Um, I was actually reading a review um, someone did of this movie. It was on like a, a Facebook page, um, horror movie Facebook page. And he was talking about, oh, is this not the most annoying lineup of characters you've ever seen? Completely ruined the movie. I think the point of the movie went completely over his head. Like, these characters are meant to be dumb, they're meant to be annoying, um, and that just makes the movie so fucking fun. I had a great time watching this movie in um, cinemas. Um, I thought it was really funny. If you haven't seen Bodies, 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 check it out. Um, it's sort of like a slasher mixed with a whodunit. Um, yes, with annoying characters, but it sort of makes the movie more entertaining. If you haven't seen it, just check it out. Um, 
obviously haven't given it a rewatch since picking it up, but I will. Um, another one I picked up on the same day, Annabelle Comes Home. Um, the reason why I jumped on this one, again, I was thinking of doing a ranking of The Conjuring Universe. This was the only one that I didn't own. Um, I have seen this one before, just didn't own it. Um, it's been a while since I checked out Annabelle Comes Home. I think I remember it being pretty decent. Um, I'm guessing just off the top of my head, if I was to rank The Conjuring Universe now, this would fall somewhere in the middle. Um, because there are some really bad ones in The Conjuring Universe, but then there's also some great ones. So um, I feel like Annabelle Comes Home would be somewhere in the middle. Um, next one here is an Australian film called The Long Weekend, or Long Weekend. Um, I don't know why I decided to pick this one up in particular. I think I heard someone speaking about it, I can't remember who. Um, yeah, and it just sort of tickled my fancy about uh, this couple who decide to, cap uh, decide to take a camping trip and they start fucking with, you know, nature and the animals and the environment and sort of treating it like shit, so then Mother Nature runs amok on them and all the animals start attacking them and everything. Um, I thought this one was okay. Um, I remember I watched it while I was really tired, so um, I wasn't fully um, checked in, but I would uh, definitely not be surprised if I enjoyed it more on a second time watch because I love animal horror movies. I love nature run amok films. Um, like I said, I think the factor of it being just sort of okay for my first time watch was that I was really tired, but long weekend. Um, another one I picked up here, Gun Woman. Um, I thought this movie was pretty fucking cool. Um, and I think that's sort of most people's um, description of it, um, those who have seen it. Um, it's more of a action exploitation film, um, a film of revenge. It's about uh, this guy who had his wife murdered by this um, fucking psycho. And he pretty much takes this um, drugged up fucking rundown chick off the street and he trains her to be an assassin to get revenge. And I don't know, I just thought this movie was really fucking cool. It wasn't what I expected in a lot of ways, but um, I guess it sort of went above my expectations as well because I wasn't overly keen going into it, but I had a great time with Gunwoman. I thought it was really fucking cool. Um, so check out that one. Um, here's a fun one. I picked up Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Um, this is a movie where you can just turn your brain off and have so much fun. Like, this has got to be, like, one of the most fun um, horror comedies of, like, when's this? I feel like it's from the 90s or 80s. I don't know, something like that. But Elvira is just the best. I don't know. This movie's so quirky and fun, goofy, whatever you want to call it. But whatever adjective you use, it's a fun time. I don't know. I've always loved Elvira. I think it's fun. Just never owned this movie. Um, I've never seen the sequel. What's it? Elvira Haunted Hills or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. Elvira's fucking hot as well. Sorry, I just had to say that. I know I'm not breaking any fucking ground by saying that, but she is. She's fucking hot. Alright. Um, over the past um, three months, I've had my birthday. Um, and a safe bet for friends and family to get me as presents is always horror movies because everyone knows how much I love horror movies. Um, but the horror movies that they got me Though I am extremely grateful for everything that I'm given, of course, for my birthday, I could have got nothing, um, but it really shows how much I, or how much my friends and family know little about horror movies. They go, oh, this looks good. I try to give them hints at what movies I want, but um, let's go through it. The first one here is called Crocodile Swarm. Um, it's like this low-budget CGI fest. Um, it wasn't very good. Um, I put it on late because um, I was kind of tired and I was definitely um, happy to have this movie be one where I fall asleep. I feel like I wasn't going to be missing much. I definitely remember falling asleep towards the end. Um, yeah, CGI, Crocodile Fest, wasn't very good. Um, you can have fun with movies like that, but I don't know, I was let down. Um, another one here called Kinderfanger. Um, I'm not going to lie, I did watch this one. I don't remember it much at all. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I fell asleep again. Um, I, yeah, very blank in my mind. 
Um, like I said, I'm extremely grateful for <laughs> everything that I got for my birthday and people thinking, yes, he loves horror movies, I'll get him something, but um, yeah, you can sort of see the quality of movies I was given here. Uh, next one, Jack in the Box Rises, which I believe is the third or fourth in the franchise. I don't know how many Jack in the Box movies there are. Um, I haven't watched it. I kind of feel like I should see the ones before this, before I check out Rises, but I also feel like it probably isn't the worst franchise in the world to, you know, have your first time watch be a later entry, but I don't know, maybe I'll wait and watch the first two, but Jack in the Box Rises, I don't know, could be fun. Um, this one I was actually a little heart hurt that they got it for me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I sound so ungrateful, but fuck, this movie's bad. Um, Jeebus Creepers Reborn. Um, I remember it came on uh, one of the movie channels late at night, and I'm like, you know what? I've heard nothing but bad things about this movie, but I don't know. I might as well check it out and see if it's as bad as what a lot of people have been saying. And you know what? It could possibly have been fucking worse, honestly. It was so fucking bad. I remember, like, I was watching it late on the couch one night. My brother came home from somewhere. He walks through the back door and he goes, what the fuck is this? And I'm, I I'm thinking the same. Um, like, I thought the third Jeepers Creepers movie was pretty fucking bad, but this one is, like, terrible. Um, so I was a little bit sad that I got this one, but like I said, you gotta, you gotta at least pretend to be grateful. Then now, like I said, I try to give them hints of what movies to pick up. Um, I guess they picked up one small scent of a clue that I laid. Um, they picked up Thanksgiving, um, Eli Roth slasher film. Uh, it's pretty much Scream, but set you know, with different characters and a different storyline on Thanksgiving. Um, this was one of my favourite horror movies of last year. I've always said last year, 2023, when it came to horror movies, it didn't set the bar too high. Um, but I thought this one was fun. I really hope it turns into a franchise. I just feel like the way this movie ended, it pretty much needs to. Um, yeah, I had a great time with this movie. Like I said, pretty much the only uh, movie that I... Yeah, I put out plenty of clues for movies that I wanted for my birthday, but this is pretty much the only one that um, a clue actually got picked up. So Thanksgiving. Um, let me just quickly say, because I know I sound like a prick right now, I am very grateful for everything that I got given for my birthday, um, horror movies wise and everything. But like I said, you can definitely tell that my friends and family ain't too aware of what's a good movie and what's not. I don't know. Some of them, like I said, I haven't checked out yet. They might surprise me, but I don't know. I don't know. I sound like a fucking asshole. All right, next movie here. This movie I did for my 100th random horror review episode. Uh, this movie is The Editor. It was a first time watch. Thank you, Chi Town Bud, for recommending this movie. I, um, for those who don't know, my 100th episode of my random horror reviews was a viewer's choice. Um, anyone who recommended a horror movie for my 100th episode, I put their suggestion in a raffle. And Chi Town Bud, his movie, The Editor, got picked out. As I said, first time watch, I thought this movie was a lot of fucking fun. It's pretty much a love letter slash parody slash whatever of a jello. Um, it was so fucking fun, really funny, um, turn your brain off and just have fun with it, it was so fucking cool, um, yeah, a really cool movie to do for my 100th episode as well, so thank you again for the recommendation, Tritown Bud. Uh, next one here, not really a horror movie, um, but a lot of people in the horror community talk about this one, so I thought I'd pick it up and check it out, um, Super 8, um, yeah, I thought this movie was pretty cool. Um, I like these, you know, kids going up against something bigger than themselves sort of thing. Um, I thought this one was pretty cool. Like I said, not a straight up horror movie, but um, yeah, a good ensemble of a kid cast here. It was really cool. Really cool movie. First time watch. Um, another one that's not really straight up horror, but it's just so weird and strange. You sort of have to include it. Uh, here we have Crash, uh, directed by, um, fuck, why am I blanking right now? David Cronenberg, fucking hell, dumb. Uh, but yeah, for those who don't know this movie, it's about, uh, this guy or, like, a group of people that get off on car crashes, 
so like they try and participate in cars getting smashed up, it turns them on, um, really fucking weird movie, um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the biggest fan of this one, but I thought I might as well pick it up, I think I saw it in stores and it was pretty cheap, so I'm like, why not? Um, here we have Fear Farm 2, um, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of the first Fear Farm movie, um, it had some elements that I thought were okay. Um, I saw this one in stores and I'm like, you know what, might as well give it a try. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't nearly as good as the first one. And like I said, the first one wasn't even that good in the first place. Um, this one, they went for a way more comedic approach, at least in my opinion. Um, the budget was even lower. I don't know, there just wasn't really a lot to like about this movie. Um, and it only goes for 71 minutes, but it just felt like it went for longer, unfortunately. Um, you always don't want a movie feeling like it's dragging, especially when it's so short and it feels like twice as long. Um, so yeah, this movie wasn't very great. I don't know, I just thought I'd give it a go. Um, now I've spoken about the VHS franchise a little bit through this uh, video so far. Um, I picked up the two movies in the franchise that I didn't own. Um, they've only recently just got released here in Australia, so we'll start with the VHS 94. Um, I had never seen this one before. It was the only one in the franchise out of the six films to date that I hadn't seen. And, and I remembered a lot of people saying that this one was actually pretty good, and I was pretty keen to check it out. And man, it fucking blew my socks off. Like, I had so much fun with this movie. Um, probably, like, the most fun I've had with a VHS film, like, in a while. Like, I genuinely, as soon as it finished, I was like, fuck, do I want to watch it again? Like, it was so fucking fun. Every segment in this movie was, like, above average. It was a really fun time. I dug um, VHS 94. Um, and then now to the most recent installment in the franchise, um, which I do have a review of this one coming out soon, uh, VHS 85. Um, this one does things a little bit different. It has segments actually tie in together to make a continuous story. Um, it has a, um, it changes up the wraparound formula a little bit. So there's um, different approaches structure-wise in this one, um, and it definitely grew on me. I'll give you a little hint towards that review that will be coming out soon, but definitely grew on me. VHS 85. Um, like I said, I've also recently just ranked the franchise on my channel, so if you want to see me rank the six films from my least favorite favorite, go check out that video. Um, I think maybe I forgot to put this with the birthday pile. I don't know, I'm not sure if I got this one for my birthday or not, I'm not sure, but Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, this was a very, I feel like honestly mixed, uh, film from last year, um, I feel like most of the mainstream didn't really like this movie, but, you know, for people that weren't too familiar with um, the lore and everything, I don't know, I feel like they kind of dug it. Um, the Five Nights at Freddy's games, I never really played. I was aware of them, and I was aware of some of the storyline and stuff, but um, you couldn't really call me a Five Nights at Freddy's um, super fan or anything, but I thought this movie was actually pretty good. I think the movie's biggest problem is how tame it is. Um, they need to just pump up the rating to like MA or something like give us some more blood and gore and everything and I understand that um, the audience for the games and um, the lore and everything are mostly kids um, but I feel like the biggest problem with this movie is how tame it is but I actually really like the story I think there are a lot of um, things that really work for this movie I feel like there are more positives than negatives um, I did give it a rewatch since picking it up and yeah like I said I still feel like its biggest problem is that it is too tame but I don't know, let me know your thoughts on that movie. Um, probably one of, if not my favourite first time watch out of everything that I've picked up over the past three months, Bone Tomahawk. Um, this one fucking blew me away. First of all, I'm not the biggest fan of horror westerns. Again, a very niche subgenre in horror. Um, but I'm not a very big fan of them. I think the last horror western that I watched was probably Broomstone. And I didn't really like that movie, and I thought this would be something similar, but this movie was fucking awesome. It's like this small town, um, out in the west, obviously, I, I will not be able to tell you what year. Um, but the town gets invaded by troglodytes. I know, very niche fucking villain as well, but I thought that was fucking awesome. And this group, Sheriff, um, a husband of a woman that was uh, kidnapped, um, 
this old guy, they team up together to go and save these people from the troglodytes. And honestly, a lot of this movie, um, nothing overly horrific is happening. It's just them getting from A to B. Um, it's like days worth of travel to get there. Um, but just the cast and the characters in this one fucking carried the movie and it was so fucking cool. Um, yes, there are really good moments of horror as well. Um, when the troglodytes first invade and start kidnapping and wreaking havoc, I thought it was pretty cool. And then um, there's a very brutal um, scene or scenes towards the end as well um, in the troglodytes' lair. But this movie just in general was so fucking cool. Like I said, probably my favourite first time watch out of everything over these uh, three months through today's collection update. Alright, that's it for the movies. I've got one mo uh, TV show here to go through. Um, I would have picked this up right at the start of um, autumn, so these three months, because I feel like it was ages ago I watched this. Uh, but Yellow Jackets, Season 2. Um, at least the people that I personally know that watched um, Yellow Jackets, like my close friends and everything, they said that they were really let down by Season 2. Um... I would say it is a step down from season one, but I still really fucking dug it. Like, I don't know the general consensus on season two. If you've checked it out, let me know your thoughts. But, um, like I said, I feel like it was a step down from season one, but season one was so fucking awesome. No matter what, like season two was like just fucking great still. Like I really dug it. Um, like I said, I feel like I watched it ages ago now. So, um, it is a little bit loose in my mind, but uh, yeah, I really dug season two of Yellow Jackets. And just like that, through the horror movies already, um, I say already, but still took like 27 minutes to go through it. Uh, but now to the albums. Like I said, I'd normally go to collectibles now, but like I said, I feel like these guys are going to be like, what the fuck with those? Um, so with the albums, like I always do, I'll start off with the albums from this year that I've picked up. There's three to go through. Uh, so the first one was Green Day's new album, Saviors. Um, I thought this album was pretty fucking good, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, it's not up there with Dookie or American Idiot or anything like that. Um, but for like modern Green Day, um, I thought this album was definitely a step in the right direction, especially after what was their latest album, um, Father to All Motherfuckers. That album was like really fucking bad. Um, but there's a lot of really cool fucking songs on here. Um, the American Dream is Killing Me. Uh, Bobby Socks plays all the time on the radio at the moment, so I feel like I'm slowly starting to get over that one, but I still think it's a pretty cool song. Um, yeah. I feel like this album was um, definitely a step in the right direction, especially considering what modern Green Day can be, you know, as I said, coming off the back of their last album. Um, this is an album I'm super keen to talk about just because I want to talk about the band and I've never had a chance to on my channel so far, but Alien Ant Farm's new album Mantras, or M Man Antras, because they always have an ant pun in there. I don't know how to fucking break that down. But mantras. Um, like I said, for the longest time, I've wanted an excuse to talk about Alien Ant Farm on my channel. Um, and I've just never had it. This is actually the first Alien Ant Farm album that I've picked up. Um, but I'll get to what, what I want to talk about. Alien Ant Farm has got to be one of the most underrated bands. Like, fucking ever. Like, you can say, you know, in their subgenre being new metal or whatever... They are so fucking underrated. A lot of people would say like, oh, they're one hit wonders. You know, they had that cover of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal and that was it. Maybe if you dig a little deeper, people will say um, their song Movies. But nah, they're not. They're so fucking good. Like, I feel like they're so slept on. Um, I only just recently found out that some people like really don't like their cover of Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson, but that song is fucking awesome. Uh, that album, their debut album, um, anthology was the album that got me into Alien Ant Farm and made me realize that they're fucking way better than a lot of people make them out to be. Um, but either way, I was super surprised that they had a new album this year in general. I was actually on YouTube listening to Anthology. I was like, okay, I feel like listening to that album again. And I saw they had a song called Fade and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this is probably from a few years back. Haven't heard this song. No, no, no. It was said two weeks ago and I went out and I 
found out that they had a new album, checked it out, really fucking cool again, it's not as good as Anthology, but, um, yeah, I don't know, if you're sleeping on Alien Ant Farm, grow up guys, they're really fucking cool, um, the third and last album from this year for this, um, haul, uh, Sum 41's new and last album, Heaven and Hell, um, they've already said that this is going to be their last album before they break up, um, I believe they're gonna go on a worldwide tour as well, I'll probably try and get tickets if they come to Australia, because, you know, why would I not jump at the chance to see, um, Sum 41 before they, you know, break up for good, but, uh, this album, <sighs> I wouldn't say that I loved this album, there are definitely moments that I really enjoyed. I think I more so picked it up for the sake of it being the last Sum 41 album, and they're a band that um, I really do enjoy, so um, I definitely wanted to pick up this album. Um, it's sort of broken into two. I thought the album was just called Heaven and Hell, but it's two discs, one heaven, one hell. Um, there we go. Uh, and like I said, there are moments of like some really good stuff here, um, I really like Landmines, Waiting on a Twist of Fate, um, Dopamine, um, one song, what's that song that I really liked, um, Johnny Liber Libertine, I think that was really cool, um, Rise Up, um, they have a good cover of Paint It Black on here as well, um, yeah, like I said, that's the third album from this year, the rest are albums from years past, uh, here we have an album called Steady Glow by a pop punk band called In Her Own Words. Um, this is a band that I'm actually kind of new to. Um, at work, I work with um, one of my close friends and we have very similar tastes in music, but he really likes um, In Her Own Words and like I said, it was a band that I wasn't really too familiar with. Um, and he plays it in the car while we're driving from different sites and this is probably the album that grabbed me the most. Um, so I've been listening to it, definitely wanted to get my hands on it, and um, yeah, I've been sort of sinking my teeth into it since I picked it up. Um, here's an album by um, an Australian band, which I only just realised has actually disbanded, um, which sort of pushed me to pick up this album. I actually think it is the best album by this band, um, and that is Love and Loathing by the band With Confidence. Um, at this point, they were a three-piece um, one of their members had just left, and um, like I said, this is probably actually my favourite album by them. I think it is their best effort. Um, just a lot of really fun, cool songs on here. Um, Jaded, Tales, um, Icarus is a really fucking slept on song as well. Um, so yeah, this was a cool one to pick up. Like I said, it actually surprised me. I was like, I wonder if they've had any new music, and I just googled them to see if they've had any albums that you know I just wasn't aware came out. And it said they broke up, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, again, um, like I said, going back to albums from the past here, uh, Waterparks and their album Entertainment. Um, I've always said that this was a step down for Waterparks, you know, out of the albums that, like, I still like this album, I only pick up albums that I do enjoy somewhat. Um, but I've always said this is a step down from, like, top tier albums of theirs like Double Dare and Fandom um, and it might be recency since like I've just sort of been re-listening to it again since picking it up but maybe this album wasn't as bad as what I remembered it being like really cool songs that you know I never have slept on like 1111, Blonde and um, Not Warriors but then there's some that you know maybe I overlooked for a while like Tantrum, Rare, um, what's the other one called? Sleep Alone um, there are some really cool moments on here as well, and I've been enjoying listening to this one. Um, maybe a basic album to pick up, but I picked up Guns N' Roses' Greatest Hits. Um, Guns N' Roses is a band where, you know, I'm not really gravitating to any of their um, individual albums in particular, but I'm happy to pick up their Greatest Hits because they have some cool stuff. Um... You guys would probably know that I'm a big fan of pop punk, so you guys might be surprised that I never actually owned this album, uh, but it's an album that I grew up listening to, found it pretty cheap. Um, simple Plan, uh, No Pads, No Helmet, Just Balls. I always forget the name of this album just because it's so long. Um, but like I said, it's an album that you know every pop punk fan would know um, and probably grew up listening to. I know I knew this album 
really well. I was actually a, never really a massive Simple Plan fan growing up, but, um, you know, like I said, when you grow up listening to these genres of music, it's just an album that is sort of in your blood. Um, so I was happy to find a copy pretty cheap, pick it up. Sorry, the dog's going ape shit in the other room. I'm not sure if you guys are going to hear it. I guarantee you probably can. Yeah, fuck. My dog is so annoying. All right. Um, and last album to show off here, Pearl Jam's Versus. Um, I always talk about albums that I grew up with in my house, whether it was in my dad's collection or brother's collection or something. Um, I know this album back to front, just never owned it in my collection, found it cheap. So I picked it up. Um... I don't know, is this a better album than 10? I don't know, let me know if you prefer 10 or Versus. It's very 50-50 with me. But like I said, never just actually owned it in my collection. Alright. Now to my collectibles. Now, like I said, don't tell me, don't say that I didn't warn you. Um, a lot of it is quite underwhelming. And a lot of it you're going to be like, what the fuck, why are you even showing us this? Um, but I want to. I want to. Um, so the first ones here are actually relatively normal things that I would show off. Um, I got two Funko Pops. Uh, the first one here is the Grabber from the Black Phone. Um, I was just walking through a store, checking out the new Funko Pops, and this was one of them. Um, so I had to pick it up. Um, I do really like the Black Phone movie. I think it's really cool. I thought this Funko Pop was a cool design, so got my hands on it. Now, you guys know that I normally don't like to double up on characters unless it's a character that I really do fucking enjoy um, and it's like one of my personal favorite horror villains or something but I got this one for my birthday and again you know I'm just gonna be grateful for what I'm given I probably would have passed on this one but someone got me another version of the grabber um, it's just called the grabber alternate outfit um, I still think it's a pretty cool design but like um, you know, I've got multiple Chucky's because Chucky's one of my favorite horror movie icons and everything. I've got, um, a couple of Michael Myers and, you know, characters like that. I wouldn't say the Grabber is someone that I would normally go out and get two, um, copies of or two alternate versions of, but like I said, someone got this for me as a, uh, birthday present. Um, I still think it's pretty cool, so I, I will hang on to it. Um, I just wouldn't have probably picked it up myself, but... I know I sound like the most ungrateful prick right now. You guys are going, what the fuck? Like, I would have loved that for my birthday. I, I hate to sound like a douche, sorry. All right. It's always when it gets to the end of my collection update videos, I start rambling and talking shit and losing my mind. This here um, is a candle that was given to me by a friend. She actually makes these candles. She made this candle herself. Um, Camp Crystal Lake. It is... Pumpkin spice latte scented. Um, I know, I was a little bit bummed that it's not like brain matter scented either. Um, now, it actually isn't too Friday the 13th themed. All it is, it's got like this um, little sticker on the front. <laughs> Smells really nice. Um, I actually forget the name of her company. Um, like I said, it's a friend of mine. She makes these candles herself. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember the name of her company. So if you want to know, just let, uh, hit me up in the comments below and by then I'll be able to find the name of the company. Or if I remember, I'll put it in the description below. But she made these candles. Um, she doesn't just do horror ones. She does um, quite a big variety. And um, I'm not a candle person. So obviously I haven't lit it. I'm not sure if like you can even just have display candles I don't know but I think it's pretty cool she knows I like horror movies so she gave it to me thank you very much um now the last thing to show off in this um this is where it gets really what the fuck um this is this one item pretty much sums up my whole caution that I was um suggesting with my collection update I went through a um servo here in Australia um like I said, for, for work, I do a lot of um, traveling around and I stop at servos a lot to fill up and get food through the day and everything. And I saw this in there and I was like, this is fucking cool. Oxy Shred with a promotion for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire with Slimer on the front. 
Now, I do drink energy drinks, um, especially in the mornings because I get up uh, before the sun's out and I need to stay awake to just get through the day. Um, however, Oxy Shred is not my preferred energy drink. I've never actually had an Oxy Shred before this one, but just that it had Slimer on the front from Ghostbusters, um, I was sucked in. So it's Oxy Shred and Slime. Um, I know you probably can't tell, but it's, um, what's the word? Embroidered when it's like got texture to it and it's really fucking cool. I've had this displayed on my shelf, believe it or not. And I know a lot of you guys are going, it's a fucking can. Um, you know, a lot of you probably went, I've had 10 of these and binned them all. But I am for some reason, I don't know, call me a fucking loser. I'm like obsessed with this can. I think it is so fucking cool. So I've had it on my shelf, on display, call me a weirdo. Um, like I said, this has just all in general encapsulated why I was saying I'm going to move my collectibles to the end and a lot of user guys are going to be going, what the fuck about it? Because I have a can, an empty can of energy drink um, that has got a ghost from Ghostbusters on it and I wanted to display it. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, as I said, I've never, I never actually had Oxy Shred before this. Um, it pretty much tasted like, um, the Fruit Tingle lollies. I'm not sure if they're just Australian, but they pretty much, it pretty much tasted like a Fruit Tingle. Um, but like very, like, um, it took me back a little bit as well. I presume there's like a shit ton of caffeine in it, but all right. Like I said, normally when it gets to the end of my collection update videos, I start rambling and losing my train of thought and everything. It's t and I'm tired it's like 10 o'clock at night and I've got work tomorrow, so um, I'll be running on very little sleep. But uh, thank you for joining me for this collection update video, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you for another one in three months' time, guys. Peace and thank you for joining me.